So Tony from Electric Car Nage just used what's car reliable data to prove EVs break down more than any other car type. And I've got the full survey breakdown that reveals you know, the entire story. Hey EV fans, my name is Des from the Electric Oracle and today I'm reacting to Tony's analysis of the what car reliability survey. And I've got the complete survey data here with 29,000 responses covering 199 models. Now, while Tony gets the headline numbers right, the detailed breakdown shows why the story is far more complex than his conclusion suggests, actually. So let's dive into what that data actually shows. Let's, let's watch some of his video. Like, eek, eek, and a little party app every time I get some good news, which at the moment is every day. So, you know, it's, it's going quite well in that respect because I woke up this morning, I received a message from one of my disciples. <laughs> I bet the evangelists hate me calling them disciples, so I'll do it more often now. Um, and uh, he sent me a link to an article in the Daily Telegraph. Not behind a paywall today either, which was nice. And uh, what car have conducted a survey of 30,000 motorists, asking them about the reliability and the breakdowns of their cars. Now, in this survey, you'll be pleased to hear, milk float, Volvo XC40 recharge milk float. And that one was on the road, not fall, falling out of a multi-story car park. <laughs> oh dear, anyway, what was I saying? Yeah, what car have um, done a survey and asked everyone what type of car they drive, petrol, diesel, hybrid, milk float, etc. And, uh, and the results are staggering. What car survey of 30,000 drivers revealed that EVs break down more than any other type of car? Not my words. Survey. Survey conducted by what car? Not my words. Don't have a go at me. Don't tell me I'm talking. I'm not. I'm simply reading the words off the page. 16.8%. So Tony's absolutely correct on these headline figures. Uh, the What Car survey of 29,967 drivers shows 16.8% of EV owners reported breakdowns in the last 24 months. Now compare that to 10.7% for petrol cars, 14.1% for hybrids, and 15.4% for diesel. So yes, technically EVs do have the highest breakdown rate. But here's what Tony's missing. There's a massive variation between EV models. You see, the Mini Electric scored 98.4% reliability with just 5% of owners reporting faults. And meanwhile, the MG4 scored 63.8% with 30% of owners reporting an issue. Now, that's not that all EVs are unreliable, but there are some manufacturers that haven't figured out the quality control, unfortunately. Floats that were surveyed and had a breakdown. One in six. And then the article goes on to say that this backs up what the CEO of AA, Jacob Pufforder, said in April. And let go back to more videos in April because I covered this subject with a video where um, Jacob Pufforder said, it's really weird, but um, we attend more breakdowns to EVs than we do to anything else. And the milk floatery were apoplectic with rage. They could not... <laughs> so Tony is referencing Jacob Fowler, I think I'm pronouncing his name right, from the AA correctly here. The AA did confirm in April 2025 that EVs break down slightly more often than petrol and diesel vehicles, but the what car data shows why. Now, looking at the fault categories, you've got non-motor electrics, basically software issues, sat-nav and infotainment problems. Then you've got 12 volt battery failures, but you notice what's not really top in the failure list, electric motors and drive batteries. You see the Nissan Leaf, for example, just had an 11% fault rate, mostly interior trim and brakes, nothing EV specific. Believe such blasphemy. The head of the AA saying that their beloved vehicles break down more than anybody else's. He was, he was only saying what facts he'd been given, and he was only telling the truth. But, as we know full well, the truth has no place in 2025 in the world. 
because everything is manipulated. As I stated yesterday in my video, the entire world is manipulated into telling you what you need to hear, not what you want to hear. Jacob Perforder said that what car have carried out a survey, 30,000 drivers, and come to the same conclusion that the last time I did this. The evangelists were like greyhounds out the traps. They were quicker than me when I turn up to a wedding and I see the words free bar. I charged like a wounded rhino. And so did they. You can't say that. BEVs, as I as you have to call them if you're a whack. Oh, sorry, evangelist. Um, BEVs are far more reliable because they have less moving parts and therefore they have less to go wrong. And that's why they break down less often. Yes, in theory. In practice, however, because what I like to look at is what actually happens. Not what in theory should happen. That's what happens when you trust the science. Trusting. Do you know what? Here's where Tony makes a fair point about theory versus real world performance. But the survey data actually supports the fewer moving parts theory, believe it or not, for well engineered EVs. Now, the Mini Electric and the BMW i4 both scored 95% reliability. Tesla Model 3 achieved 89.5%, a massive improvement from earlier years. Now, this kind of detailed model by model analysis separating good EV engineering from poor implementation is exactly what I provide weekly in my Thursday catch up newsletter. You see, the issue isn't EV technology itself, it's manufacturers rushing to market with inadequate quality control. The science is theory. Actually, seeing what's going on with your own eyes and ears and going, well, that doesn't seem like the science is right. That is fact. Science fiction, science fact. I can't believe I'm having to explain this, but nevertheless, here I am explaining it to you. Um, and naturally, when this survey came out, the Watcor survey, out they came. Out they came in their Hessian robes with their, their fully recycled clothing, their paper straws, their solar panels, their COVID vaccine passports. That's another one for another day. First up, Ben Nelms, CEO of New Automotive, said, and I am paraphrasing the first bit here. Rather than ask milk floaters who own these things and live with them daily and actually have real life experiences, end paraphrase, we should look at MOT failures. What? Because apparently there's less failures of MOTs by milk floats. I wonder why that is, Benjamin. Is that because they don't have to be MOT for the first three years of their lives? Therefore, hardly any of them have had any bloody MOTs yet because you only started selling them in the last three years. No, oh, less EVs are failing the MOT because they haven't had an MOT yet. And then he goes on to say, but at three years old, the MOT failure rate between EVs and, and non-milk floats is comparable. So hang on, up until the three years, EVs fell less MOT. Petrol cars don't take fucking MOTs for the first three years either. No car does. It's the law. Okay, so this is where Tony's timeline error really matters. The survey includes the BMW i3 from 2013 and the VW e up from 2013 and the Nissan Leaf from 2019. But here's the fascinating part. The older established EVs often score better than the new ones. The i3 was 94.5% 94, 94 reliability. The e-up was 94.6% reliability versus the brand new MG4, which is just 63.8%. This actually supports the opposite of Tony's narrative. It shows mature EV technology is reliable when properly maintained. What the hell are you going on about, man? But after three years, when they do need an MOT, just like every other car needs an MOT, then milk floats are failing just as much as ice cars, or as I like to call them, proper cars. So that is the most pointless contribution ever made to a debate on a survey ever made. Luckily, he wouldn't alone. Some bloke from electrifying, some EV buying site said, this flies in the face of the Start Rescue Survey. 
the Start Rescue Survey. Start Rescue are the fifth biggest provider of breakdown services in Britain. And they found in their survey that less EVs broke down. So therefore, we must use that evidence. We cannot use any other evidence. We must use the Start Rescue evidence because that proves what we want to say. However, the AA, the biggest motoring organisation in Britain, contradicts it. And what car, the biggest motoring magazine in Britain, contradicts it. So, so the what car methodology actually clarifies this confusion. They asked 29,967 owners, did your car suffer any faults in the previous 24 months? That's different from breakdown callouts. In fact, you find a Porsche Taycan owner with aircon issues doesn't call roadside assistance, they book a service appointment. But it still counts in the what car survey. So both data sets can actually be accurate. You see, Start Rescue sees fewer EV callouts because EV faults often don't strand you. While, it, while what car captures all the reliability issues, whether they need roadside support or not. So do we go with the two mass surveys done using proper data from people actually driving these things on a daily basis or do we go with start rescue which is made up of a few independent breakdown services around britain and as a fifth of the membership of the aa i don't know which i keep getting told that i'm not scientific i'm not factual i'm not accurate details matter don't they mr ev guy details matter yes they do well how about them details have a bit of that oh i'm sweating me tits off up here but i'll tell you what i couldn't be happier today is a wonderful day so <laughs> actually what the what the what car data tells is a really nuanced story so yes evs as a category score 87.7 percent reliability versus the higher scores for other fuel types but look at the model variation the mini electric 98.4 the mg4 63.8 that's a 35 point spread within the same technology category. So I actually think this isn't about EVs being inherently flawed. It's about manufacturing maturity. Some manufacturers clearly understand EV integration and quality control and others are learning it the hard way. Now look, the aggregate EV reliability data does support his concern about breakdown rates. But the model by model breakdown shows this is a quality control issue, not a fundamental technology problem. The best EVs, your mini electrics, your, your i4s, your Nissan Leaf are achieving 95% plus reliability scores. And that proves the technology works when manufacturers get the implementation right. Now look guys, for the weekly analysis that digs into the real data behind these headlines, join my Thursday catch up newsletter. What's your experience with EV reliability? Are you seeing quality differences between the manufacturers like, like Tony mentions? Let, let me know in the comments below. Also, let me know if you'd like to see more of these type of reaction videos. I actually quite, even though we're on the diff different sides of the, the argument, I actually quite like Tony's analysis there. He's, he's actually quite funny. Um, so yeah, if you want to see more of these sort of uh, reaction videos, <laughs> let me know. I, I actually quite enjoy doing them. Um, but yeah, my name is Des from the Electric Oracle. I really hope you've enjoyed this video today. And I really hope you've enjoyed some of Tony's dances as well. My name is Des with Electric Oracle. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.